Hi, welcome to the Chess Files. The answers are out there. I'm James Eid of the Eid Foundation. You can call me Jim. The Eid Foundation is dedicated to building communities through chess. And if you're part of a community, you're never alone. We also are dedicated to increasing chess literacy, the ability to read and write chess notation so that you can open up the world, the ocean of chess literature to anybody, anywhere. And if you are on the internet, you can find the chess community. And if you are not, we can build the chess community wherever you are, whatever language you speak, whatever country you're from, we can help you. That's what the Eid Foundation is for. Um, today, the question is, do you ICC? And I have brought the president of the ICC to come in and tell us about what is the ICC? How did it start? Where did it begin? And then I'm going to bring in a fact checker just to make sure he's telling us the straight story. And I want to bring onto the program the ICC president, Marty Grun. Marty, hello. thank you for joining me on today's show. Totally a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> please tell our audience, our viewing audience, because they, they may not know as much about the ICC as I do, which is, you know, and I have an extravagant background in, in and knowledge of the ICC because I I I um, don't play chess online. <laughs> I, I come from the old days when we played face to face over the board, yes. and so tell me how did you get started playing well, online? Well, um, my personal experience was uh, messing with computers back in the day of three hundred baud modems where. Uh, the internet hadn't really kicked into gear yet, and I, I was, uh, my father was a, a radio and TV repairman, and he gave me a ham radio uh, where I, I didn't have a ham license, but it, it really intrigued me. I could listen to people all around the world, so I thought that's really cool. But when the, uh, um, the, uh, the modems and uh, being able to dial up to websites like General Electric's. Uh, oh, wait a second, Marty. I'm we're getting into specifics, so I'm going to bring in our fact checker. Oh, Brian is not ready. So <laughs> I'm going to have, wait for just a second. Now he's ready. Now we bring Brian Karen on. Brian, you're going to be my fact checker. And Marty's going to tell us the story, and you supplement or correct whenever necessary. Hi, Brian. Thanks for coming on my show. Okay. All right, Marty, so go ahead. The baud rate was abysmal when you started. Well, well, there was no internet, far as I knew, at the time I messed with this uh, this modem being able to dial up. It, it was like uh, getting onto a, uh, uh, a website that had different uh, uh, areas where you could talk about recipes or... or uh, yeah, different uh, genres of, of chat conversation. But they had a game area, and the game area had checkers, I believe, and chess. And I had played chess um, never over the board, never U.S. Uh, chess or USCF uh, rated play. But in Boy Scouts, I'd play and, and mess around a little with it. And I thought, well, I'll jump in here and play a few games. And um, there was a, a, a difficulty in chatting. It was $5 an hour after 6 p.m. and $15 an hour during the day if you wanted to get on and actually be able to type chat to others. Um, and there were several people on there, and we all had these two-letter codes or three-letter codes we could kind of chat back and forth with. And we got really adept at it. And um, Brian Karen here and uh, Lee Walker and Steve Kelly and I forget there was a couple others that Brian may remember, but we had this kind of con, um, consortium of, of uh, people that uh, played, and we um, it was it was really uh, uh, difficult in those days to uh, to log in. You had to put in a COM port, dial-up number, and your ISP, and all that. Anyway, long story short. Um, I thought, boy, these people are pretty intelligent. You know, hey, I, I got Brian's phone number, or I, I, I can't quite remember Brian, but I, uh, I got everybody's phone number. We would, we, we chatted, and um, we were on um, this site for quite some time. But then we found the Imagination Network, another uh, dial-up site, and this one was uh, similar. You had to pay 
a certain amount per hour. I was a stained glass craftsman for 37 years and didn't have a lot of money. My wife was the breadwinner as a postal clerk, and she didn't know I was spending 300 bucks a month playing on, on the Imagination Network um, with these uh, friends of mine, these online friends. And we were sitting there playing one day, um, and the interface was a chessboard, and you had a chat area below, and in the chessboard, you know, the screen had the board up, and when you played and somebody chatted, it would pop up a big rectangle in the middle of your board and disturb your play. Oh, my goodness. So, so it was a graphical user interface, but it had some difficulty. Yeah, yeah it wasn't wisely put together. So, <laughs> so one day we were watching, and Brian said, hey, that's Roman Jinji Hashvili playing. And I, we all hovered around watching his game. And I, I, I said something like, why did he move his knight to d6? Or, you know, and um, the next day I log in, there was no internet. This was inner message system. I had a message when I logged in the next day that's in all in capital letters. Don't you ever chat during my game again, followed by 20 exclamation points. So I messaged back, look, I'm just Marty Grund, the stained glass guy in Des Moines with corn in his shoes. I apologize. I know you're a famous grandmaster and i've never met one before next day i log in give me your phone number all in capital letters and i i gave him my phone number an hour later he's inviting me to come to manhattan um and uh and brian to come visit too so i i flew in i i told my wife i'm gonna go uh so i flew in and he took me to carnegie deli we went to washington square park um you know, this was this was a, a very interesting moment in my life. Right now, how did you know? It was, wait, what what did you say? I couldn't hear what you just said. How did you know it was Roman? Um. Well, uh, you know, well, first, I mean, someone told me I think you were off for someone, but also you could tell by the play. Um, back then, there were very few strong players on. You, you know, mostly non-tournament players. You know, um, I was rated back then. I think eighteen hundred and. I was probably like the fourth or fifth strongest player. I think there were one or two masters and, and then Roman. And what was really funny about it is Roman, it would be very obvious when I was playing Roman. You know, I'm playing mostly very weak players or at best, you know, around my strength. And then um, all of a sudden I would play someone who's just playing fantastically. And remember, this was like 94. Yes. People weren't using computers as much um, and they weren't nearly as strong. In fact, back then before... You know, it'd be Casper. People were like, oh, computers won't be Grandmaster, even as late as then, even though they were probably around that, close to that strength then anyway. Um, so it was very obvious it was Roman. You could tell from the moves. And it would be funny because he would pick all these different handles. Um, and, and then he would play me thinking he's fooling me. Yeah. And, you know, very quickly I'd be like, this is Roman, you know, there's <laughs> no question. No one's as strong as this. And then after they'd say, oh, it's you, Roman. And that all surprised. Yeah. What's that? Roman would be an early adopter. Yeah, that yeah, was. Yeah. Also, I will say, I remember, just as long as we're on this tangent, um, I remember the first computer cheat. I It might be the first computer cheat caught, period, or so. I remember a guy in there, he was obviously cheating because I would look over the games, you know, um, later on. This was actually a year or two later. And then um, when he finally got to ICC, because then the same guy logged on ICC, I, I might have talked to Marty or so, and we immediately had him banned. So that. Might have, I wish I remembered his name because he's, he's he should be uh, recognized in history as the first computer team, and he was really obvious about it. There was only chess master back then, right? Yeah, I think exactly, it, more or less. Yeah, I mean, there were other ones like Larry Kaufman had one, so but yeah, chess master was the, the best one or the most wide one. He's yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah, fantastic so, program at the time. Yeah, what's that? That was a fantastic program at the time. The guys from Nevada, I think uh, they were um, here in Marin County out in California. Yeah, Chessmaster was great. Um, and they once met with Marty. We were, they were once going to go on with ICC, but unfortunately they went in another direction. You remember that, Marty? Yes, I do. Yeah, they, too bad they didn't go with us. That would have been a nice thing. Did you well, guys ever pitch ICC to the USCF at that time? Well, that happened later on. In, in, oh, uh, I, we, we went through several CEOs, and uh, one of which did U.S. Chess Live, which was an attempt to try to do a uh, branded server for U.S. Chess, um, but that happened uh, several years later. Um, yeah, but back to the Roman days. Um, so here I am 
um, befriended now with Roman Jinji Hashvili, this uh, robust and gregarious uh, guy that uh, pulled no punches. Anyway, uh, so, so I, I found this book called The Internet, and it had a free chess server. Here I was spending $300 a month that I couldn't afford, and now there's this, uh, this, this IP number and an FTP site. And you had to, uh, uh, so you, you, you bounced into this IP number and up on your screen comes a, a, a an ASCII chessboard where the pawns are, uh, the white pawns are capital P, the black pawns lowercase p, the, it, it looked really uh, 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 dinosauric. Yes. Um, and, and they had a help channel, uh, or it said type one, your question. And uh, a day or two, I kept calling and at, or calling, I kept uh, um, asking, is there a, a graphical interface? And somebody came back and said, yes, um, um, a graduate student made this one. And then you had to go to an FTP site. And at 300 baht, it took me an hour to download this thing. Then you had to have a text editor, and you brought up a text editor and put in your IP number of the site, your dial-up phone number, and your baud rate, com port. <laughs> and then save that file, put it into the interface, and then fire it up, and it took you to this free internet chess server. So that was cool. And now, and now I got with Roman and said, Roman, check this out. And it, of course, he's uh, um, about as uh, um, uh, adept with computers as my wife. And it took a while, but we got him in. And then he, he got all excited and said, Marty, call my friend in St. Petersburg, an international master. Call my grandmaster over here, Fred. Call this guy. Call. So I'm bringing in this bunch of uh, uh, titled players, and I get a, I get a, a message on um, the free internet chess server. Uh, who are you? Uh, from this guy called Daruha. And I, I said, well, I'm Marty Brown in Des Moines, a stained glass guy. He said, well, I like your helping people and the help channel and and boy, you're bringing in uh, Washington Square Park with uh, titled players. Uh, how about uh, becoming an administrator? Um, this was a, a moment, and uh, it was exciting for me. You know, the ham radio thing, and now I've got this family of friends and and uh, real serious chess players. You know, I'm a maybe a 1350 rated chess player, but you know, I'm uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Cool. cool. You no, know, it was. It was really, really uh, uh, took my evenings away. Put it down. Yeah. So here I am, um, um, and now an administrator on the site, and I've got these friends from I from Genie or GE. It was General Electric. It was GE, capital G E N I E Genie, uh, the one eight hundred dial up, and then we had the I N N network, which was Imagination Network, which was all kinds of games, uh, more graphical, Dungeons and Dragons, Checkers, Chess, Backgammon. Um, and then we found this free site where we didn't have to pay a dime, um, except our internet providers. Um, we had this kind of crew of uh, Lee Walker and Steve Kelly and and uh, my son, who's now 37, this uh, this morning, Brian, said to me, do you remember, do you remember D-Way? D-Way, a username. From one of them from INN um, that we are also friends with. I couldn't remember what. Anyway, <laughs> so here we are on on this uh, this this uh, uh, free internet server, and uh, Professor Slater, who created it, he took uh, he took two graduate students' uh, um, rough uh, um, software that. Had illegal moves and several no time, no time stamp, no. Um, so he took this and, and tore it down and rebuilt it to create this uh, this site that had you know uh, move checking and all the uh, proper rules into the game for online play. And and you know keep in mind this was in ninety four five when Amazon had just started a. a a year earlier uh, than ninety four five, so there it was kind of the wild west, and nobody was 
you know, it was looked down to have a business on this Wild West free internet thing. So here we are, um, kind of breaking uh, the rules when, in fact, in 94, Danny said he's getting offers to sell it. Uh, he's just going to give it away. He's working on uh, algorithms for a future robot to land on Mars. And he doesn't have time for this. And I said with his wife, look, we'll run the show, uh, along with uh, Eric Peterson, who um, um, brilliant uh, and, and actually a feeding master. Um, we'll, we'll take this and roll with it. You don't have to do a thing, but count the beans. Let's, let's charge 49 for adults and 25 for kids. And it's the best online site for chess and, and roll with it. And we went commercial March 1st, 1995. Wow. Um, but you know, we were, we were kind of the, uh, we broke the sacrilege of, of having a commercial uh, business on the internet. Um, so yeah, um, we had, it, it just exploded. The first uh, 10 years, we were the 800 pound gorilla. We, we had uh, Magnus Carlson grew up on ICC, Carl Ano, Hikaru Nakamura, um, you know, all these, all these, uh, I mean, we were it. We ran the first rated U.S. chess uh, event in 98, um, where John Fernandez, who uh, is now running for executive board, um, vote for John. Um, yeah. he, uh, he, uh, we had a proctored event uh, where we, uh, we ran a, 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 the first rated online event. Um, we were at the top of the World Trade Center for Kasparov Anon. Yes. Uh, with, the, uh, yeah. with the first uh, broadcast of internet uh, relay with Carol Jarecki and pray for her. She's hurting right now. Um, I'm, I'm hoping she's going to be, be fine. Um, she was in the booth with, yes, for real. Well, we, Joe, Marty, I don't know if you remember, I was in the booth. Like, I went to the World Trade Center of Carol Jarecki and through ICC, me and Lee Walker, you can still find our reports online. So I went there before it all started to inspect the site with the organizer wow. and Carol Jarecki, and she had all sorts of, you know, do this, you gotta do this, this. That's and Carol. sort of like a fact checker here, I'm just sitting around, you know, watching. And then the, uh, the guy who's the organizer, he goes, is there anything you need? And they didn't really know what I was. Like when I said, I'm gonna be relaying this to the internet, that was one of the first, you know? And I said, um, well, you know, I guess it would be good if I had like um, a way to like clearly see Kasparov. And the guy goes, well, we're gonna, we'll build a glass booth above the players that only you and Lee will be in. And sure enough, <laughs> we, you know, I, I mean, it was the experience of a lifetime, the 95 championship. I was in a glass booth above the players um, and relay and everything, you know, for the internet. No one knew what was going on. I remember I was, uh, in the VIP room, because me and uh, Lee would switch off, and Larry Christensen was giving the lecture there, and I said, uh, you know, Grandmaster Schusler, you know, he he disagrees with what you said, and he goes, where's where's Schusler? And I'm like, no, no, he's he's on the computer, and he had no idea what I was talking about. He's completely confused. Um, I can go on and on. Uh, the funniest the funniest story from that time was that. Uh, so I, I come in to broadcast the championship. This is like, you know, before it's going to start. And the keyboard's not there. They have my computer there. There's no keyboard. So I go to the organizer. I go, I, or one of the people working there, what happened to my keyboard? And he goes, um, well, we locked it up for security. So where did they lock it up? They locked it up in a Nan's dressing room. This is like <laughs> third game before they're going to start. And, I, and, you know, you have all these people on ICC and Marty and other people saying, Brian, you know, what's going on? Where, where are you? And... Um, so I say, well, I have to wait till he starts playing. I don't want to interrupt the man before the game. And uh, but the guy, again, I don't think it was an organizer. One of the people who worked for him says, no, no, a man's not in the dressing room. You can just go right in there and take it. So I'm like, okay. So you know, I go to the dressing room, I cautiously knock. No, no one says anything. Open up the door. Sure enough, there's an and. And I'm like, I, I have to get my right. This is minutes before the game starts. So Anand, nicest guy, you know, doesn't say anything. Oh, I, you know, I'm yes. a complete idiot, you know, getting my keyboard like three minutes before he's going to go on. Then, and of course it was Casper, needless to say, you know, I, I would take my life in my hands. Right. Anyway, that game, um, Anand actually missed a win. 
uh, either Casper, no, I'm pretty sure it was a, yeah, a man missed the win. And uh, we were, in, again, in the VIP room. This is the press thing afterwards. And um, someone, someone says to Anand, Poe, this pot hustler, somehow he got in there. He goes to Anand. He goes, uh, you know, they come to the position where Anand could have won the game. He goes, you think Casper would have missed that? And, um, you know, and I'm just waiting for Anand to go, well, that guy, you know, pointed to the back of the room and he you know, <laughs> my conversation. But Anand is like, quickly, you know, he's just a smart guy. He goes, Kasparov did miss it, you know, because obviously, you know, he wouldn't allow it if he saw it. But um, that was scary times, but it was fun also. I was really that that happened there. You know, one other thing, uh, before I let Marty go, because uh, with the other stuff, the other funny story, we, we broadcast the Harvard Cup. This was, I think, if not the first internet broadcast, certainly one of them. It was very early on. Chris Trevi would run these computers versus the human things. Yes. And so I was running one of the first things I remember. I had a laptop and I couldn't believe it. It was like this new device, like a, you know. So, um, my friend Paul Paul Dewar is the demo board guy, and he's a, a nice guy, maybe like fifteen hundred or something. Uh, no, I don't. He wasn't even that at that point. And I'm broadcasting to like whatever was on three thousand people, however many people were watching this event. And he keeps messing up the demo board, and I'm entering in the wrong moves, and everyone's yelling at me, and I'm like. You know, it's it's the demo board guy, and uh, I mean, I didn't say that, you know, because he's my friend. But I'm like, what what's going on here, you know? And I go, Paul, you know, the rook went to see one. I go, oh, thanks, Brian. Like, you know, it's not like a big deal. And I'm like, I'm really like, so the next day, um, I talked to Chris Chabrie and and Dan Edelman, the, the organizers, and I say, listen, you know, Paul's my friend, but you got to get a new demo board guy. He can't keep up the players, you know, because they'd be moving very quickly. And um, so he goes, okay, I have someone for you. He's a Harvard professor. He's like 2,300, and he just always wanted to operate a demo board. So he'll do it. Sure enough, they put that guy on there, and the guy's perfect. I can't believe it. In speech test, he's, he's doing it all. I'm entering in. I'm loving it. And uh, for years then, I thought that uh, this guy was a Harvard professor, 2,300. One day, I'm at the amateur team with um, Aviv Friedman, who we should also mention was a big part of all this uh, start and everything. Uh, <laughs> in any case, I'm walking with Aviv. And I point to a bag. I tell him that story. I go, there's that Harvard professor. He's like 2,300. I'm not going to mention who the person was. I don't want to embarrass him. But Aviv goes, Brian, that guy, he's not a Harvard professor. That guy is crazy, you know, he's low rated and stuff. And I'm like, so Chris or whoever, they just wouldn't do it. So I was like, I don't know what Marty get on. But that was a hilarious experience. No, Aviv, Aviv Friedman was uh, also at the table where you were, Brian, with laptop doing a relay of the event. The 95 match, yeah. Yes, the 95 yeah. top of the World Trade Center. Well, I, I can go on with a story of that also that was kind of funny, because that's when me and Aviv first met. Um, what happened was Aviv at that time was working for FIX, the free internet chess server. When ICC went commercial, they kind of split them up. And... Um, the uh, you, you know the free internet chess server was the people who didn't want to go commercial. The nice thing was it kind of worked out for both because we had the commercial and we had fix and you know there were there were advantages like we wouldn't have been covering all these events and doing all the things we were able to do if we didn't go commercial. And then they still had fix, which is still around somewhere. Anyway, Aviv at that time was working for fix. He was one of the head guys there. And um, before the event started, the this uh, ninety five match. Aviv says to me, uh, and we didn't even know each other too well at that point. He goes, um, yeah, you know, I'm going to be there too. Meaning, you know, Fix was going to be there also. So I put in the admin channel, you know, which only admins see, oh, no, you know, Aviv is going to be, you know, Fix is going to be there. This is, you know, whatever I said, this is terrible. This is that. Not knowing that Aviv, you know, knows everyone and he knew people in the admin channel. So when we get to the event, you know, again, I'm at the 95 match. I'm like, you know, there's Aviv Friedman. And he's glaring at me like I'm, you know, the worst person in the world. I'm like, what in the world did I do? Why, why is this guy so angry? But then uh, very early on, we, uh, you know, he explained it. I apologize. And then he was, yeah, he was in the booth with me and Lee. And, uh, you know, huge help, obviously. Okay, go, go ahead, Marty. Oh, no, no. So anyway, we, he, he came on board with ICC shortly thereafter as a administrator of part of our, our organization. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, he. Um, well, we, we thought at the time our argument for going commercial with the fixed free chess folks was, trust us, our, we're going to put this money back in to improve our site, to be to be more. Uh, well, just the money's going to go for a, a good uh, um, uh, 
uh, improvement in chess online. And uh, we, you know, we had some naysayers, but we had like 12,000 people watching one of the uh, 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 matches that we covered. Um, we set, you know, some records on ICC for uh, observ observers. Um, yeah, it, it was quite the ride. I mean, some famous people came on board. Um, we, I mean, Peter Thiel from PayPal, you know, we had Sting playing and, and rumors of Madonna and, and in the early days, even Bobby Fischer that somebody said had played on, on uh, ICC. Um, um, you know, we had uh, yes. <laughs> top I wouldn't, like Fisher. I wouldn't go with Fisher. That, that was like that was a rumor. A rumor. But, but then, you know, Howard Stern, who takes lessons from Dan Heisman, gets on. And I get a phone call one day from, from Dan saying, Marty, can you keep it a secret? Somebody wants to call you. And I said, fine. And I, I get a phone call. Uh, hey, Marty, Howard Stern here. And I said, oh, my God, what's, so, what's uh, a not-so-Jewish guy calling another not-so-Jewish guy? And, and he said, I love your site. I, 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 you know, I, I, I want to you know, um, compliment you and, and uh, maybe get a, a, a tour of uh, how to use it a little more so. And, and just like the Gingy call in an hour, I'm getting invited to a show. And I'm thinking, my, I told my wife and, and my guys on ICC, he's inviting me to one of his shows at 26th floor of Avenue Americas. Uh, you know, they're not the most uh, um, child uh, safe um, shows he does. Should yes. I take it in the gut for ICC and go? So, so I did. I flew out, and I'm in the green room waiting to go on. He said, Marty, come out and watch watch the last half hour of the show. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go in and sit in some stadium seating off to the side and, and just kind of hunker down and hopefully not get grossed out by Howard Stern uh, uh, nasty. And I, I, um, Gary Delabonte is producer forever. Uh, says, okay, Marty, come on, and uh, he's behind me, and, and we go up to these doors, open it up to a, a unbelievable studio where he's, where Howard's behind nine monitors, and Artie Lang, his, his Ed McMahon sidekicks off to the side, and Robin Quivers, his forever sidekicks in a glass booth yeah. with a headset, and I look, and I see Howard, and I see Artie, and I see Robin, and all of a sudden, I see Howard, I hear Howard Stern say, hey, and look at me, by the way, you know, this is not the most handsome thing in the world. So Howard says, hey, there's Marty Grund, my best friend on the internet. But now that I see him in real life, I'm glad I just played him on the internet. <laughs> I turn around and there's Gary with a chair and a headset. And I go, because I was looking for the stadium seating I could get in hide and yeah, yeah. I, I turned around to Gary and I said, I'm kind of screwed, aren't I? And he said, Yeah, maybe. So <laughs> he down, put the headset on me. And Howard's saying, uh, Yeah, well, you, oh, I, I've never been so nervous in my life. 15 minutes of uh, being teased and, and uh, yeah. Robin Quiver saying, Cal, is, is Marty always this ner nervous? No, no, no. He, he, he blows gas in Des Moines, Iowa. No, wait a minute. Blows glass. No, what do you do, Marty? No, I do stained glass, uh, Howard. It was a an interesting moment. Well, right. you know, Marty, I always say that I have a face made for radio. So you know, it's 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 one of these things. The internet is a great place. Yeah, like you and me to to be anonymous. So right. I'm sorry, but now the world is, is hi, mom is going to know what you look like. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I'm I'm happily married. Um, yes, there you go. So I, I fear nothing now. Yeah. So so ICC ha has meant more to me in in, in so many ways. I I've met wonderful people. Um, some wonderful things have happened. I just uh, Brian uh, PMK and Mel on ICC uh, met on ICC uh, 16 17 years ago. And they just they met on ICC, and they're they've been married 15 years as of uh, uh, a couple days ago. And I sent them flowers for their 15th anniversary. Um, I, I we we with our co-promotional agreement with U.S. Chess have uh, been given booths at 
uh, scholastic events, and at one of them several years ago, um, I was told by Bill Scotty on ICC, you got to go meet this little Filipino coach over there from Chicago. And I walk over to the table and here are these uh, kids of color with hoodies laying down in between rounds on the table and a big heavy set black woman with freckles that they're chaperone. And here's this little short uh, Filipino coach. And I go over and I say, hi, um, um, I was told to say hello to you. Uh, Marty uh, at that time, vice president of ICC. And he says, Mr. Grug, let me tell you my story. This is West Side Chicago children at Earl and Marshall uh, Elementary and Junior High. And we had to sell cupcakes and t-shirts and so forth to get here. Um, the Chicago Public Schools have very little money to give us uh, a chance to get these kids out of the dregs of humanity where they have three gangs to go through to even get to the bus stop. That I teach uh, chess from 3 to 6 p.m. in the afternoons to get them out of the gangs and show them a, a game that gives them uh, um, uh, geometry and, and math and, and uh, better decision making. And uh, I buy the, the moms in, in uh, 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 rehab from um, drug uh, and dads in prison kind of families, just the saddest thing you can imagine. The kids come to school hungry. So out of my own pocket, I buy food and teach them chess three to six. And the, the sad news is that two of the children were murdered on the way to chess class. And the games they go through just are horrible. I, he said, but we can't afford to get to these national events. And I went back and wrote a letter called A Call to Action. And it's on our site. Uh, Joseph O'Cool, O-C-O-L. Uh, Saint Joseph, I refer to him as. We ended up, uh, um, in ICC, we have a, a, a vociferous chat uh, going on in different venues, from sports to, to politics. And in the politics channel, there are literally hundreds of people on. And I, I told them, read my letter, a call to action about St. Joseph and Mama Bear, that the, the chaperone, and what he's done to, to save these kids and show them another world. And uh, in, in, in one week, we raised enough money to get them to, I forget whether it was K-12 or Super Nationals. Right. And one of the girls won her section. And uh, Rahm Emanuel, Mayor of Chicago, invited us for a uh, meeting and a resolution written for the children and Joseph and the kids and applause. And um, the next year, we did the same thing, got them to another national event. Cook County Commissioner Steele invited us, the same sort of thing where the kids we saw that there's another world uh, that's uh, beyond the gang street, the street ridden, uh, the street gang ridden streets. And the third year, uh, we were invited to the White House to meet Michelle and Barack Obama. Oh my God! And unfortunately, it was their daughter's uh, um, graduation. We didn't get to meet them, but Congressman Davis took us all over the Capitol and the White House. And uh, but um, you know, these are the stories that have filled my heart. Um, you know, it's such heady stuff. I, I'm just so proud of you. Well, uh, Andy McFarland, uh, another, sorry, Jim, I, I know you're up against the clock probably, but, you know, Andy McFarland uh, was online, our administrator, saw somebody, I need help, I need help. And uh, there was, uh, uh, I forget the guy's name, Brian, but. Graffs, was it CJ Graffs? Yeah, CJ Graffs. Um, the, the mayor, Ryan. <laughs> he saved he saved his life the man was hurting from a heart attack or something uh, he was a crippled person and was in need of dire need of help um and it made the news um she mentioned andy created uh it was it, not the first certainly the first most popular graphic user interface zix using like yeah you know now that you know, they have chess.com, and like everyone has their idea. But that was really good back then. I remember it was a huge difference. As Marty explained how we used to enter, you know, you type in the moves and you have flex boards and all this print on the stuff. And Andy McFarland, I mean, even if you used his graphic user interface today, I don't think it would be that bad. It was pretty good. It was like, you know, graphic representation of pieces. And you can flip yep. back and forth between the console. It was very good. You know, by the way, just so we don't forget, Marty, I was thinking of another thing. ICC was instrumental in so many things. One of the big things, I need to go for my files. Marty probably has them too. 
we have the first um, bullet chest. Bullet as a term didn't even exist. Right. I used to do that. And I remember the email thread, they wanted a name for it. And it was going back and forth. And I think it was either Tim McGrew or Tom O'Connor, one of those guys said, let's call it bullet chest because it's just like bull S H I T, you know, and um, <laughs> put it as a joke, we put it up there. And now it's like, you know, all of a sudden a very common thing. Yes, I gave up playing on, on because I got addicted to it. Yeah, so trust me, I, I can tell a story. Yeah. And I a funny thing also, I, I don't want to forget, I, I mentioned, um, I, I was in the admin channel years and years ago, like this is uh, a long time ago, we have a little kid at my club playing who's incredible, okay, uh, Hikaru Nakamura. Yeah. And in the admin channel, I go, listen, we have future world champion. I, there's a future world champion at my club, I guarantee it, this kid, you know, talent off the roof. Well, this other guy, Tarje Sevenson, speaks up and he goes, no, Brian, you're wrong. The future world champion that's at my club, but Tarje is from Norway. <laughs> Three years later, or whatever it was, when it's, you know, Magnus becomes world champion or is clearly on his way, I go, hey, Tarji, do you remember this conversation we had like a long time ago? And without skipping a beat, he goes, yes, you know, I win. He's world champion. <laughs> oh, man. US champion. He's he's still working on the world champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That reminded me when I went to Vikings Day. Uh, I'm I'm at breakfast and here comes Magnus's father, Magnus, sitting across from me, and I uh, uh, I introduced myself. And he said, "Oh my goodness, this was where Magnus's playground." I see. Yeah, he'd come on and play. He'd examine. He'd play. Examine. Look where he is. Well, you, you know. know Says like, uh, or everyone back then would say, blitz chess isn't helpful for your chess, or a lot like botanic and stuff. Spoke out against it. I think with ICC and, and online chess now, what changed is you can actually look over your blitz games. Like it used to be, Kamsky. I, I once met Kamsky. He said how he used to have to write them down from memory. Every, you know, when he was a little kid and played blitz, he'd actually write down. But of course, most people couldn't do that. So with ICC and, and online chess in general, it was the first time you could play a lot of blitz games and then actually analyze them. So I don't think blitz chess is, you know, uh, it's still probably a little controversial and, and there's some bad things about it, but it's useful. You have those game records. You can look at how you played the opening. And uh, I think that made a big difference in why people like Nakamura and Carlson and everyone else became so good playing blitz. But I, I'll let you guys go on. Yeah. Well, I, I was just going to tell you that I, I am running up against the, uh, the gong, uh, which sounds only in my ears, but um, uh, I have to wrap it up. But I do want to say you're still working on broadcasting uh, live tournaments. And are you doing something with one of these uh, relatively small tournaments this weekend, Marty? Oh, this is not a relatively small one this weekend. Oh. And, and it's the Amateur Team East on ICC. Oh, that's and a biggie. That looks huge. No, there are some Favorite uh, tournament I ever played in. And I'm on the West Coast, so I only played in it once. But I, I just thought it was the best I, tournament I ever played. I, I've never seen a more um, a, a big production with uh, the the team that Steve Doyle has hired or are working with him to do Twitch. Yeah. And so forth. Right. It, it's phenomenal. And there's some 540 playing. Um, we, we've we been running uh, since uh, COVID, uh, uh, Bill Goetschberg's Continental Chess Tournaments every weekend. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars in prizes. I mean, mind you, his World Open would be a quarter million. Maybe he does 25,000 for, but we ran the World Open on ICC. We've been running all these events. And the reason I look like this is because I've been on the phone with parents that their, their child or had used illegal assistance. And um, I have to break the news for those kind of things. But it's been a busy, uh, uh, sleepless eight eight months of, uh, of COVID. But, but uh, ICC, at this moment in time, after kind of Silicon Valley beating us up a little bit over 15 years and us hanging in there for 25 or, you know, being the big boy on the block for 10 of those 25, we, we have a niche that uh, organizers are seeing where we have you can grab a Swiss Sys file and put thousand people in there and give it to us and we'll run your event, uh, Andy, around two, three through 10. Um, we've got a seamless integration of it. Um, this will be a fun event this weekend. And I think if you just look around, um, uh, just go to the Amateur Team East webpage, 
you'll be able to see some great, uh, they're thinking maybe Kasparov might come in. I guess Spassky was maybe a possibility, but he's kind of in a wheelchair now to come in and and, uh, and and share some thoughts on. Anyway, just a monster production and, and a moment of, of a renaissance for ICC and credibility of online organized uh, fair play overseen play that, that uh, runs seamless. So we it, it's a new dawn for us again. I'm oh, really excited. So happy. And I want you to know that the foundation has your back. Um, if I can help in any way, you, you just let me know, because I think that just the stories you've just told today uh, have touched me greatly. The, 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 what we want to do is help people that can't help themselves. Um, give, they don't have the resources, give them the resources. If you can, why not? Absolutely. No, it's, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go to our uh, deathbed so with a smile on our face knowing that we're not perfect, but we tried. That's my... <laughs> Good for you guys. Uh, I'm, I was really taken with the stories because I remembered the old dial-up days uh, very, very well. And wh where you are now compared to where you began, it's it, you couldn't have imagined it back then. And uh, so good job, both of you. And I'm going to have to say goodbye to you now, but uh, we will be in touch. And Thanks, James. And thank you, Brian, for, for uh, t telling me to get in touch with Marty. I really appreciated that. Okay, sure. Great to get to know you, Marty. And uh, right, gotcha. what you're doing, and uh, you know, we'll we'll be in touch. Please stay. Okay, so I'm going to take you guys backstage and uh, say goodbye to the viewing audience. Hi, mom. And uh, uh, but we'll we'll talk again. Okay. All right. This has been the Chess Files. The answers are out there by the Eid Foundation. The Eid Foundation is dedicated to building communities through chess. And if you're part of a community you're never alone. And if you don't have a way to start a, a community of chess players in where you live, whatever language you speak, whatever country you're in, the Eid Foundation can help you. That's what we're about. So this has been a wonderful show from my point of view because it was something that I did not know a great deal about because I am not, I'm an old dog and I, the, learning the new trick of playing chess online is difficult for me. But if you're young, it's probably second nature. And but this, this show is broadcast every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And if you love this show, please tune in next week. We're going to keep doing it as long as I can do it. And uh, it's fun for me and my guests today. I hope they had fun, too. So thank you again for um, being a part of this broadcast. And we will see you next week.